What is going on first and welcome back to Hungary for Success with me Foggy Plays on FM21. Today we're looking at the end of season review for our first full season in the top division with the ROG. And we're going to have a look at the transfers as and when they happen. It's going to be a little bit of a transfer special. Uh, we did qualify for Europe if you missed the last episode. We're playing in the Europa Conference League. So fingers crossed we could win that. I think it's the first year they're running it. Um... If you do want to enjoy this episode, make sure to like and subscribe. Now let's jump into the video. Right, fellas. So as I said, the end of season review is what's going to be first in front of me. Um, you might notice a little bit of a difference with the webcam. Um, it disconnected. I don't know why. So I've had to redo all my green screen filters. So it's a little bit different but we won't worry about that so the end of season review starts with the new arrivals as you're all well aware um Shedler does get player of the season or signing of the season to be fair i think he deserves it he had quite the season although garate also had a very very good season Shedler only gets a c plus why they're happy that he agreed to a lower wage than would be expected to pay yeah, he only gets a C plus. He was fantastic. Garate gets a B minus, um, and the two point five million pound release clause would be excellent for the club. Lastra didn't get a huge amount of games, but they're quite happy with it. Uh, Hood Wagner, they're quite happy. Four hundred thousand release clause. I did not know how that was in his contract. I have to look into it, get certain that. Uh, Derek gets a B minus. They're very happy with Sterkovic, even though. Didn't actually play any games. Kralevsku F. Too high. Deal co is costly on paper. I don't think so. I think it's pretty good. Um, Versace only gets a B minus, even though he's got a release clause of 2.8 million. As you can see, I kind of got smarter as the season went on, or as the transfers went on, when I was able to add extra clauses to it. Um, so they were expecting us to fight bravely against relegation this season. We managed to finish third even though we lost 11 games in push cash be very disappointed if only lost nine games and don't even make europe this year um we had an average attendance of 43 percent 1546 people that's not not terrible um a plus fight bravely against relegation we got into europe uh, hungarian cup let's say about that the better they get knocked out by pekshi they can understand why the team were knocked out by pekshi i'm not so sure I don't I don't really agree with that, but I'll take it. Uh, the less they want to complain about it, the better for me. Uh, the biggest win was against uh, Uish Pest at the start of the season with 5-0. Match to remember was a 3-0 against Kishverda, where the game only really started for twenty or the last 20 minutes. I feel like some of the other results were quite important, or quite more, mem or that bit more memorable, but whatever. Um, and the goal of the season went to Versace, but his first goal for the club, I think that was his first goal. Um, we I would like to be able to click here and see it. But he did score some absolute worldies after his arrival. The club's reputation has not changed over the past season, but everything else has increased. We've gotten a bit more sponsorship money, about 60k extra broadcast revenue. I don't think we had a game on TV this year that I can remember. But 864k, I will take it. Corporate and hospitality, so we've got up almost three times competition prize money, rocketed it up. Um, and the match day commercial and retail went up quite significantly. We sold 688 shirts, which is actually a pretty decent amount. Garate, Gabriel, Ortiz, Shedler, and Teifenbach. Surprised Teifenbach is so high, but then again, he's a good player. Um, the best 11, this changed quite a lot over the season um in the striking position not so much but and in goalkeeper actually so hood wagner as the goalkeeper pair left good on guard as our wing backs on guard to be fair i think he did play more than anybody else uh suarez and markella suarez was a little bit wayward this year um i think he we progressed a little bit quicker than he did so hopefully next season he'll be Good enough to keep going. Ortiz and Teifenbach inside the midfield. Versace and Shedler as our wide men. As you can see, 
Versace started 19 games. I think he was here for 21 games. He nearly missed two by injury. But Karate and Gabriel both leading the line. Um, I also think the two of them were top goal scorers in the league this year. But the we did win manager of the year, which I don't think has been... I, this kind of gives it away because I don't think you get that until after this. Uh, but we did win our uh, Shedlar won fans player of the season. Young player of the season went to Gabriel, to be fair. Still only 20. I forget that sometimes. I feel like he's a lot older. Uh, Shedlar did get signing of the season. Goal of the season went to Versace. Top goal scorer was Garate with 24. Shedlar with 16 assists and 6 player of the matches. And 7.4 for the highest average rating. Vass had the most passes completed per 90. He, to be fair, he is a he's a good playmaker. When we give him an opportunity, which... He doesn't get too many opportunities, and it's a little bit disappointing. But Karate did win the Hungarian top or top Hungarian Division One top goal scorer. The most player of the matches for the Hungarian top division went to Shedler. A player of the year was Shedler. Goalkeeper of the year was Hut Wagner, and young player of the year. Hut Wagner for Hungarian first team. I think he. I think he should be. Uh, should be in the, the conversation. We did break a bunch of records this year. Garate scoring the most goals in the season. Uh, the most league goals in the season went to him as well. Because he didn't score in anything other than the league. Because they didn't play him in the cup. And that was a terrible, terrible idea. Uh, most goals by a player in a match went to Garate with a hat-trick. Uh, and in a league match. Most assists was 16 for Shedler. Most player of the matches of the season went to Shedler. Oldest player went to pick um, Delchig. Who... Didn't get a huge amount of opportunities this year, but, you know, what can you do? Mercits um, was the highest fee received, and Shedlar scored after 14 seconds, which I think was in an episode. Um, but as you can see, the 7-4 win against Hanvid was the highest scoring game. We've been involved in some of the high scoring games. Um, a record high. We've never finished so high in the league. Um... Back in 62-63, managed to get 4th place with 30 points. Scored, got 5th in 1949-50 with 18 points. Some of the points total, 10 points to finish 9th. That is, that is insane. 16th place, got you a, uh, that's crazy. So, players inducted into her overall best 11. Um, there's plenty of them actually. Hood Wagner, Pirilevsku and Garate all making it in. But we have Hood Wagner as the goalkeeper. Pirilevsku... Belnizi, Roshako and Zabari as our back four. Ngazi and Ortiz in centre midfield. Shedler and Sab uh, Jabo as our wide men. Garate and Gabriel leading the line. Mercits, Suarez, Barnabas, Toth, uh, Mesherash, Delchig, Karash and Girsik are on the bench. Um, I'm not surprised by Hood Wagner making it in. He was fantastic. Last year's right back. Karash, I suppose, yeah. Pierlevsky has been pretty good. Um, Shabo, I think it's just because we didn't really have like a guarantee. Like these two played when they started the season as our first choice. But that's not really been the case for Shabo since he picked up all those injuries. Very disappointing. But the expected goals was just shy of 61. We actually got 83. Expected points was 52 and a half. We got 58. And expected position was third. And we got third. So what do they want us to do for next season? Or the club cultures and for next season. Uh, play defensively solid football. Which we did not do this year. Play direct football which they were quite happy with. Counter attacking entertaining football. I can do that. We, we play very entertaining football. We score loads of goals. We concede loads of goals. It is just a trait for us. Work within wage budget. I think we can safely say that that's not going to be too much of an issue. They want mid table for next season. And reach the third qualifying round. Of the Europa Conference League. Um, and then from then on they just want us to work. Towards being a top half team. And then be a top half team. And maintain it. I think we can do all that. Without too many issues. Uh, Shedler is currently our only team leader. I do think. Um, Hurt Wagner and Galate. Would probably jump into team leaders. At some point. Um, influential players I would imagine. Ortiz, Teifenbach and Markella. Would be. The next in line to move up. So end of season team meeting. We are going to. Top half. 
think top half is out of her reach. Um, yeah, mid table, fine, just whatever. Um, pleased with those of you who agree with me. We are going to give ourselves a good account, reach the cup competition proper next season. Not good stages yet. Just, let's just give a, a good account of ourselves. That is fine. A um, couple of promises. We look at bringing younger players in. Of course, um, Baron is. Baron is one of those young players. So <laughs> I would have thought that he would have been happier with that. Um, that's fine. We'll see you when you come back from your Hollyballs. New season report. That's generally a load of bollocks. But it's actually not that far off from what I'd say is probably our best team. Um, Versace missed 40% of the season with his broken ankle. We Milan Vince, Vinci, six injuries. That's a, that's a lot of injuries. Uh, the lads will be back on the 4th of July. So they have a nice month and a half to go off and enjoy. That's insane. 11 goals and there was an expected goals for each team of 1.73 and 1.16. We really, really did the business. <laughs> we did the business. Uh, Shedler, the player of the year for our most man of the matches for the year. Fantastic. Hood Wagner gets goalkeeper there. Even though he conceded 60 goals, kept 11 clean sheets. Beats out Dibish for the fact that he was fantastic. We have Hood Wagner, Shedler and Garate all making it in to the team of the season. Shedler wins player of the, the, player of the year. Garate gets top goal scorer when at one point my um assistant and my coaches were all telling me to stop playing him because he wasn't good enough but we did win manager of the year Sergey Rebrov speaking of has okay no he's actually extended his contract never mind he was supposed to be leaving um so I was going to assume that I was going to be one of the managers linked with taking their taking his position but it's not going to happen um the chairman is happy with the fact that we've won manager of the year as am I. Um, and the players coming in, we have a few players. Uh, Pushkash is a centre back who is playing for uh, Midland. He's Hungarian, 11 under 21 caps. I think this guy is going to be fantastic. We actually have a Hungarian in our defence. We've just um, a couple of players coming in to be young options on the wing as well. Zoigber, I'm bringing him back. He's coming back. You know, I don't think he's a big fan of us. I think he's an acquaintance. But he, that's the signings we have sorted at the moment. And Simon Toth is going to be leaving. But Trent, our uh, balance wise, we have 400,000. We still are due some money in. I think. Um, wage budget looks like they're going to be dropping that a little bit. We haven't actually gotten anything about that yet. Okay, here we go. So, uh, on guard is after getting a pay increase and we've been given a transfer budget of 281,000 and an initial wage or wage budget of 45 and a half thousand oh we've already lost a little bit of money from our balance but that's that's a lot more than i was expecting so i am going to be quite happy to take that 281,000 that's a significant amount of money that i was not expecting to be given so maybe maybe this summer is going to be a an interesting transfer window. Hmm. Right, we'll be back in just a second for the 1st of July when all of these players are coming in or leaving. Right, fellas, so it is the 7th of July now. We've had a couple of players come in and a couple of players leave, but I forgot that we were going to have to play in the Euro Conference League. Um, we've drawn Shrak, which are an Armenian team. Yeah, Armenian. Um, we're favourites for the game. Which is interesting. Uh, so we played them twice in a week. And if we beat them, we play either is it oh, Zagiris or some team from San Marino? Yeah, uh, Zagar uh, Zalgaris or Trifiore. So be either traveling to Lithuania or San Marino if we can beat Shrek. So whew, should be an interesting one. We have a a little bit of, as you can see, offers out for players. Um, a couple of players that we're looking to bring in. We need a left back and a right back because we don't have any 
actual right backs or left backs. Um, as you can see, come, come for a cheeky little offer on Nelson Semedo because we're affiliated with Wolves, hoping that they'll let him come to us um, and Ruben Vinagre. But I've gone for two more sensible options, um, a left back and a right back. So let's see how that goes. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, a lot of players looking to go out on loan for the year. Um, Erno Mayer has a lot of interest in him at the moment. Um, and Aaron Giersik <clears throat> also wants to leave. So I should kind of look like they're taking him. But we've only signed the three players so far. We've uh, Yuhash, who has come in as a right winger option, who I'm teaching to be a left inverted winger. Came in from MTK. Decent little, uh, little winger. He's potentially going out on loan to Halidas. So we'll see how he gets on. Uh, this one, Shumbor Pushkash. This is the one that is the one that I'm most excited by. And it seems that the, the board are quite interested in as well. He's uh, quite a good all-rounder. And I think that he could be in our team for quite a while. And he's Hungarian, which is something we really did struggle with for the last couple of years, is to have Hungarian centre-backs. Um, and then Akas, Akas Zuiber, a player that we had in the first season, has come back home. Although technically MTK was his home, we've stolen him away. So he is our player again, uh, this time on an extended deal. So he'll be here for the foreseeable. Uh, Lucas Shabo came to me and said he wanted to leave, so he's gone to Vassas, who got promoted last year. So 18.25 mil million, I would, oh, 18.25k, all up front. They've paid for everything. He's going to be playing as a Vassas fringe player. Um, Invasca came along and took um, Lensis, a player who I did like, but as you can see, didn't get many game time, much game time. So he's gone back to the second division to just play a little bit of football for uh, for them. Lastra has gone out on loan to Depression for the season. Hopefully he can get some game time. Um, he didn't get any last year. He played what, one game for us in the league. He played three games total. The poor dude needed needs some bit of game time. Uh, Marco Gerzda, you might remember, is a Hungarian centre-back. We signed on a free in our first season. Played six games. Went down on loan last year. And uh, we sold him for £425. Yeah. Um, we had just a random youngster leave on a free who was terrible. Cameron Stanley has gone on loan to Hanvid. Um, I'm still not sure what to do with Cameron Stanley. He's he's not been very good. But if he gets a chance with Hanvid, we'll see. Cause I do want to give him an opportunity. Um, and Belenizzi has gone as well. 14k um, for a guy who didn't get enough game time last year. Um, did play a little bit of right back. But that's the reason we need a new right back. Because if you look at our team, we only have the one right back. And we only have the one left back. Um, although Artur can play left back. But we're looking to sign players that are under 19 so we don't have to register them so like as it is right now there's everyone that's in on trial is over 19 so they're going to be a little bit more difficult for us to get involved in the team um but left back wise we've on guard Pierlevsky can play there but he's the only right back that we have at the club as well um and Marco or Marcello Suarez can play there as well but you know I, ooh. Uh, we also have for centre back then we're pretty well covered um, as you can see the player that I'm most like put uh, Pirilescu is there as a the centre back so he's not going to play as a centre back we like but see one one right back our backup right back at the moment is 15 and he's not very good so I'm not going to be intending on playing him all too often um, and we might have to do something with the midfield because Ortiz is pretty much our only starting midfielder at the minute um, like Versace and Shedler are wingers. Canales is a winger. Vass, yeah, to be fair, he's probably him and Casiedo and Um, I'm not sure about Michael Vang. I think he's... that um, The American experiment may have failed. Um, on the wing, Versace, Canales. Um, Perry Moss looks like he's probably going to be going on loan this year because they did give him a new contract and say, you can go out on loan, which probably wasn't a good idea. Uh, but then we have Versace... On the left, but Shedler is going to be the one starting there. Um, up front, yeah, you can see it. Uh, with Gabriel and um, Garate, but then 
like, who do we have after Manazimi? Burzy. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a... We're, we're, I'm trying to make the squad smaller. Because we do have, a, like, at one point we had, like, 40 players in the first team. Um, we still have 31 now. I do want to make it a little bit smaller. But we have to see what we can do with, you know, registration and whatnot. Because as it is for the Euro Conference League, uh, we can only register 21 players because we don't have any homegrown players in the first team. Well, we do. We have Barna, uh, Gearsick. Um, yeah, those two. We have two. So we need to uh, we need to work on that. But we do have plenty of players in the under 19s that are looking decent, but they're not quite ready for first team football yet. Um, he would be the top Hungarian that would be like Neri, but he's not very good, and he's annoyed. So I'm trying to get rid of him, and he has an offer on him, thankfully, in Vasca. Uh, but other than that, then, like, we've, you, there were Katona, like, the, the guys that we brought in on deals in the last, like, six months from their, well, I suppose Molnar's been here for a little while longer, but, yeah, it's been a, we need to make the under-19s a little bit smaller as well, we've quite a number of players, but we're going to end the episode here, we're going to come back tomorrow for the Shrek games, uh, boat legs we're starting at home for the first leg um and then because there's a week in between there's a high chance that we're going to be getting some players joining uh, we've pretty much rebuilt our coaching staff as well um everyone i think at the end of last season was pr yeah was pretty much out of contract so we've just kind of gone and cleaned house just all new all new everything um i didn't mention that it's actually not going to show you. Delchik retired. Uh, we released Karash. Let him leave. Uh, Nagy also left on a free. And Satmari. Really sorry. Satmari. I, I have failed you. But he's been released as well. Um, surprised not saying that. So you can see how how busy we've been. Um, yeah. Delchik. Delchik retired. Um, is he in the. He's not. Yeah, Delchik retired. Um, it was quite unfortunate. He was... I'll have to probably like, look up here somewhere. Because I'm not going to be able to remember how to spell his name. I, I know I gave him a game in the... Was it the Cup? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he has retired. Even though he had two years left on his deal. Decided to retire. Um, offered him a job to be a coach. And he was like, <laughs> nah fam. So, what are you going to do? Leave him off. He's gone, gone off to do nothing, it seems. So, yeah, like I said, we're going to end the episode here. We will be back in the next episode for both legs against Chirac in the Euro Conference League path. First qualifying round, second leg. So, if you have enjoyed this episode, do make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share with all of your friends. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.